If you are shopping for an AM5 motherboard, you might be lost because there are so many choices out there. One of the best choices, in my opinion, and after researching these motherboards, is the B850 chipset. It will give you the best value for your money and it will give you the latest technologies while keeping its price low. And one of the best value B850 motherboards is this Asus Tough Gaming B850 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. So in this video, we're gonna open it up and I'm gonna show you what comes in its box. I'm gonna also show you all its headers and all its connections. I'm gonna also show you the back ports on it and talk about its specifications. And I'm gonna tell you what are its strengths and what are its weaknesses. So let me start first by opening the box and showing you what comes in it. And this is everything you get in the box, the good looking and well built motherboard, a Wi-Fi antenna, two SATA cables, some documentation, tough gaming stickers, and two packages of M.2 rubbers. Let me show you the headers and the internal connections of this motherboard. You have here on the left two 8-pin CPU power connections, and you have here the AIO pump, the CPU optional fan, the CPU fan, you have here LED lights for debugging, addressable RGB, two of them, 24 pin 80x power, USB C for your case that is 10 gigabits per second, and also that delivers 15 watts of power. You have here USB A 5 gigabits per second, two SATA ports, chassis intrusion, front panel, CMOS clear jumper, two SATA ports, two USB 2.0 ports. Thunderbolt USB 4 port that requires an Intel Thunderbolt expansion card and for it to work you need to install it in this PCIe X16 slot and this is a serial COM header addressable RGB once again these three here are for the fans for the chassis this one is the audio connection and this is for the COM debug and this is also here for the chassis fan for the sockets for the internal components you have the CPU socket here and notice there's an arrow on the top left here. So when you install a CPU, there's also an arrow on the CPU. It should be installed in this direction. You have here four two channel memory banks. The black ones are channel one, the gray ones are channel two. When you install a pair of memory DIMMs, you need to install them always in the channel two. So in A2 and then in B2, they support DDR5 8000 MTS 256 gigabytes and they are AMD Expo compatible. This is the M.2 one that supports PCIe 5.0. This is a PCIe 5.0 port that is X16, and usually here you install your GPU. It has a quick release, this is the one here. These two PCIe 5 connections take their power from the CPU. Now you have PCIe X1, and this is Gen 4, and it takes its power from the chipset. This is PCIe X16 Gen 4 also, and also it takes its power from the chipset. Now you need to know that this expansion slot shares its bandwidth with the M.2.2.3. So if you install an M.2.2.3, this one becomes unusable. And here you have also PCIe X1 Gen 4. Now here you have two M.2.2 drives that you can put. So this is M.2.2.2, that is PCIe 4 X4, and this is M.2.3 that is PCIe 4x4 also and they take their power from the chipset. For the M.2 sockets, the M1 and the M3 support a form factor up to 2280. The M.2 supports a form factor up to 22110. And I already talked about the four SATA 3 6 gigabits per second ports. For the back panel connectors, you have HDMI out, DP out, three USB 10 gigabits per second ports, two USB 2.0 ports, and this one is also for the BIOS flashback. This is a 2.5 gigabits per second LAN port, USB-C 20 gigabits per second, four five gigabits per second USB-A ports, Wi-Fi 7 antenna connectors, BIOS flashback button, and these are audio ports. Other specifications of this motherboard is that it's Wi-Fi 7 can go up to 2.9 gigabits per second only and you should know that Wi-Fi 7 is supported in Windows 11, 24, H2 and more otherwise it will work in Wi-Fi 6E. Now also it has a Bluetooth 5.4, it has 14 plus 2 plus 1 power stages 
and its audio it is the ALC 1220p it also supports many types of rates and they are dependent on the CPU model so for Ryzen 9000 series it supports RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. For Ryzen 8000 series, it supports RAID 0 and 1 only. And for the 7000 series, it supports RAID 0, 1, and 10. Also, for the 8000 CPU series, it has other limitations that you can see on the bottom here. Now, let me tell you about the strengths and weaknesses of this motherboard. I'm going to start with the strengths. First, it has an excellent value. Second, it has Wi-Fi 7 and also it has PCIe 5 both for the GPU and also for the M.2 and also it has a port that is USB-C 20 gigabits per second on the rear panel also what I like about it is that the M.2 slots has integrated heat sinks now what I don't like about it and continuing on the M.2 so the M.2 heat sinks need a screwdriver to remove them so they don't have an easy latch and also what I don't like about it is that the PCIe X16 slot will be disabled if you install a drive in the M.2 3 slot. And also I would have preferred if it had at least one USB 4 port. Now if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave Amazon affiliate link in the description. If you make a purchase using my link, I'll gain small percentage at no cost to you. And this will support my channel. If you liked my video, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you in the next video.